Alright, what is up everybody? Welcome back to the channel and another video in Unreal Engine 5 where we are trying to make an action game co-op so we can play with our friends. We got some stuff going on. Uh, there's been a lot of cleanup videos lately and this will probably be one more. Uh, you see this? This, when we spam like the inputs, spam the roll button and stuff. Uh, let's fix that so we can do that. Um, so, our PC master. So, this is the reason like we press the evade and we just evade. And same with attack, we press the light attack and then we just attack. And I won't actually do like a controller, uh, a component for the controller. It's gonna be, it's not that complicated, it's not that much, so you can just implement that into your own stuff or copy mine and usually like if you're watching these tutorials and are trying to implement it into your game probably don't have a bunch of complicated stuff set up in your controller anyway maybe you do oh, the concept is still pretty easy in our animation states we have this can't take action DPI character. So if we go to DPI character, we have this call set can take action. So I probably did this before. I'm gonna remain this to BI character. Blueprint interface BI combat. I locomotion. I. I. This master. There we go. That feels better. Um. So all we need to do is. Probably in our player controller instead. Let's check. Uh, I just want to see if I have. Don't have that here either, right? Check for can take action or anything here. So we need something like that for the MPC as well, I think. Tick here. Okay, so this is how we're deciding that now. What's stopping the character from just the MPC from just spamming attacks. Uh, 
Alright, I'll figure that out later. A P E P C master. Since this is gonna be in the play controller, I'm gonna make a function call set player can take action. Action. Then I'm going to go into my animations. Just make sure See, these already have this can take action. This is bi character. Screwing anything up here. Good, so So we have the piece of master here. I go into the event graph event call player can take action to a variable can take action go to the inputs and do get can take action and we're only gonna do these inputs if we actually can take action. So if we can't, we're not gonna do anything. And by default, this needs to be on. Work. Because I need to replace the interface call in here. On the end, on the notify end, we're gonna enable can take action. Begin. Disable can take action. We also need to actually get the owner and get controller. Uh, get owner cast to pawn. Get. So we get the specific controller that actually owns this pawn. And once again, casting in this case is fine. Pawn already exists. And it's a base class, so it's not gonna cause any additional loading. Because the pawn doesn't load anything specific in memory. Like so. OK. 
can't take action. Because I'm casting to a base class, and the base cl that base class is anyway gonna be loaded into a memory, and it's a engine base class, so it's it's very light. That works. Still doesn't work. It's this time. I begin should turn it off. And should turn it on. There we go. So now I am spamming the buttons. Spamming. So there we go. Easy fix, and let's also, while we're at it with the interfaces. Uh, I can now remove that. It's in use. That's not in use. So that. Have this get faction. So the NPCs are damaging each other, and we don't want that if they are the same faction. Uh, in the Face manager, face, weapon hit, server apply damage, solve send damage. Weapon hit. That's in the character manager. Okay, so let's change this because now we are. I think I mentioned this when I did it. So here we are. Still want to make it component based, so this is probably not. Let me pause and think for one second. Okay, I'm back. Okay, there's one thing we can do here because we want to. Uh, or there's a couple of things here why this setup is not ideal. Uh, the first is we're sending this like we, if this is a character manager then we're gonna send the weapon hit to the character manager but it, if it's not we're gonna check if it's on NPC because both the NPCs and the players are using this trace manager so we either send it to character or to the NPC the issue with that it's not an issue per se because it's gonna work fine it's just we might need to set it up here and here and we need to send this twice and we get a reference to the character component here and the mpc manager here so the weapon trace manager it's, it's still very small because i'm not using any hard references pretty much any of the components so it's, it's still pretty small but uh Weapon Trace Manager now knows about the Character Manager and the NPC Manager. 
which is not necessary. So these are now pretty much tied together since they are hard referencing. The trace manager is now hard referencing the character component and the NPC manager here, which is not necessary. Uh, so we could make an interface for this instead. Uh, which is probably better. And we want the same interface in both of these components. So So we have the character manager. It's used in the MC manager. Can't use the combat interface because that's already in the MC manager. So character manager and just add the combat interface. Combat interface will have a function call weapon hit. And we basically just need a Basically, just need a uh, info result in that. So the input hit result. Now can send this, use this, get components by tag, get the correct component both of these, no matter what owner it is. So if we now go to master MC, manager we're looking for, right? Tag. Add a tag called the manager. Let's do the same in our player. That way we can find the right component without hard referencing it. The owner will be the player or the NPC. And we're gonna get the actor component class with the tag manager and we can just get the first one because there's always gonna be only gonna be one and here we're gonna call weapon hit instead which means we can now delete these branches Do the same here. Salting here as well. And there we go. And now in the managers, uh, 
tables and stuff down here. Can do event weapon event call weapon hit. This instead. And in the MC manager, grab it's called. Just gonna add the combat here then. Events call weapon hit. So now we are sending it here with an interface instead. And you can see that these this weapon hit function here and this weapon hit function here in the character manager are the functions that we called from here before from the weapon trace manager so that makes it a little bit cleaner and we also don't have to um, hard reference components so get component See, these are the only ones we have. So this should be smaller now. Yes, and you can see it's way smaller. It's not no longer 10 megabytes. It is now 600 kilobytes instead. So it's better. And let's see if that actually works. Works from my end and works from those. There is it. So yeah, better setup, and we can actually do another thing as well. Um, As I said, the NPCs can hurt each other. So we want a way to check if the hit actor uh, so this is inside of the NPC manager, right? If get component by class This is fine because the MPC manager already knows about the MPC manager. Actually, let's do the same here. Get component by tag. Manager. Get a copy. And same here, BI combat get faction. And not equal. Get the MPC details. Break action. Let's 
So if the fraction is not equal to our own fraction, so we can damage it. It's going to make a local variable to have less lines going everywhere. There we go. And we need to implement this in both of our components as well. So get character details. Actually, this is the character manager. We know it's always going to be the player, so we can just input the player here. And the NPC manager get faction to npc details make and faction there we go so now i should still be able to hurt them I can hurt myself, but they shouldn't be able to hurt each other, as you see. That looks fine. Cool. Alright. That looks like it. That's gonna be it for this one. I will see you in the next one. Peace out.